components of the database environment and applications of the database of relational databases. So in this case, uh, we're starting on slide 24 of the chapter one uh, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, in this case, we can see that uh, we have uh, various components, right? So, so what does a database environment look like? So uh, first of all, you have people, data and database administrators. Um, first, we've, we've talked about the data. Uh, we've talked about uh, people who have to be put in charge of the data. Um, so those are, uh, those are two components. Uh, we have system developers. So those are people that uh, put together the application um, and uh, change the applications uh, for end user requirements. And then of course we've got end users, the people that are, that are going to be uh, utilizing the data for reports, uh, people who are going to be doing data entry, uh, all of those kinds of end users. So uh, all of those people uh, along with the data have to uh, use a user interface, some kind of means for interfacing with the database management system. Um, some of those interfaces, some of those people will use things like case tools, uh, which again are uh, described very well in the uh, chapter, so I'm not gonna get too involved with that. Um, there are application programs, uh, so those could, those could be web-based, those could be desktop applications. Then there's the database management system, which interfaces with the database that actually holds the data um, and also uh, deals with a repository. And the repository is usually where the metadata uh, is kept. Uh, all of those components are um, defined on slide 25. So I'm not gonna get uh, too crazy with that. They're also uh, defined very well in the, uh, in the chapter in the book. Um, those all those can be found on page 16 and page 17 of the text at least in the 10th edition anyway um, we talk about the range of database applications at this point in the chapter of uh, so we've got personal databases that's uh, the type of database that you're going to be making uh, for yourselves uh, that's basically the project that you're working on uh, there's the two-tier client server databases um, that are, uh, I'll explain those more later, there's multi-tier, and then there's the enterprise, which are the, the granddaddy of them all. Uh, so again, we've got personal databases. We're talking about, you know, one, a couple of users at the most. Uh, the size of the database is gonna be measured in megabytes. Um, we've got two-tier uh, databases. And uh, again, I'll, I'll break out what exactly that means uh, in the next couple of slides. Uh, we've got three tier, we start to get larger, more users. Uh, ERP uh, and data warehousing are really the, 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 the largest uh, types of database applications um, that are out there. Uh, so a two tier works like this. A two tier are the end users and their computers using uh, maybe a, a wireless or uh, a LAN. Uh, to access the database server, um, which in turn accesses the database. And the database itself, those files may be in the database server, maybe not. Um, but this is basically the two tier where you have end users using some kind of network technology to get to a centralized database server. Then we've got our three tiered uh, architecture uh, where we've got uh, a client tier uh, which is uh, not only, uh, in this case, typically we're using a browser to interface. So all of the different end users are going to be using browsers, uh, browser technology, Firefox, Internet Explorer, whatever, uh, Safari to uh, get to the application or web tier, which does um, things like authorizations and, and, and stuff to allow you to get down to the third tier, which is the enterprise tier, which is actually where the database is, where transactions actually occur. So the web server uh, serves up the web pages um, and, the, and sends requests to the enterprise tier. Uh, so 
the, the main thing that we want to concentrate on is the enterprise data applications. These are uh, ERP systems, enterprise resource planning. Uh, this is, you know, large scale, right? So now we're talking about things like Hofstra, um, IBM, Citibank, right, or ERP. And as time goes on, uh, those uh, types of um, applications gather up so much data and become so complex uh, that the reporting systems require the use of a data warehouse. Uh, we'll get into data warehouses in uh, IT 118. I'm not going to get too crazy with that now. Um, the next slide is an evolutionary, you know, back going from 1960 to uh, present day. Um, what are what kind of applications are being developed? Uh, we've got our enterprise data model, which we've talked about already. Um, We've got our, uh, we, we develop our database, uh, we specify scope, um, we need to have the overall picture of the organization at a high level, again, enterprise data model, so a high level. Uh, we set up our ERD, our Enterprise Relationship Diagram, which is part of the project. I have a video for that as well. Um, descriptions of different entity types that are going to be used. The relationships between the entities and again I mentioned business rules uh, we'll get further into business rules in later chapters and finally here is our um, our uh, business function to data entity matrix for the um, uh, Pine Valley furniture company uh, I'm not gonna get too much into this we'll get further into Pine Valley in uh, later videos. Uh, so that, at, at this point, uh, you should be uh, ready to, take, to uh, finish uh, homework one and do quiz one. Uh, those are the end of the lectures for the first half of chapter one.